Wait, you didn't watch Adam Family? Like the original, original? Yeah, that's one of the black oh, and white one. Okay. That's why I was yeah. saying, yeah. I'm okay. assuming, again, when I add these notes, I'm just assuming maybe everybody doesn't know. Or like maybe oh. we have a younger audience. I'm hoping, come on. <laughs> Young audiences. <laughs> <laughs> what if our age range is like 40 to, <laughs> wait, no, 30 to 60? I was gonna say the way you've talked about old people, I don't think old people fuck with oh, you like true, that. true, <laughs> and I don't fuck with them. <laughs> old people, I mess with you. JK. I'm not even. <laughs> I won't even call you old mature people because I'm in a developmental class and I know that you are mature. So anyone fifty and up, you are welcome here. This is a safe space. <laughs> I am just joking. I really don't hate old people. <laughs> Oh, where was I? Oh my! I God. don't remember. Okay. <laughs> oh, Antron later move. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably make the beginning of the episode. <laughs> I was like, the last few episodes, the beginning is just me saying something mean. <laughs> I was like, people gonna think I'm mean for real. That's funny though. <laughs> okay, get it together. Strangers, I'm Britt. And I'm D. Welcome to another episode of It's, it's a, strange a Strange World, World After, After All. All, the podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural, urban legends, conspiracy theories, and all of the things that keep the world strange. This is our 30th episode oh i didn't even <laughs> i didn't even know that i thought it was like 27 or something like that no it is the 30th look at us yeah look at us look at god <laughs> and look at us i was listening to something the other day there was something on the radio that i was listening to or maybe a podcast episode and then i was listening to just like podcast advice from somebody that had been doing it forever. Don't ask me his name right now because I'm not going to remember. <laughs> Maybe it was like Pat Flynn or something like that. That sounds familiar. But yeah, he had been doing it since like 2012 and he has like over 6 million downloads. Oh. And like, yeah, but um, he was basically saying, he was talking about streaming numbers and he was saying like even if let's say you get between 20 to 30 downloads for an episode which apparently that's like the average for up and coming podcasts so i was like oh okay oh we're doing good then we do yeah. right <laughs> yeah that's what i said um but he was like imagine being in a room and sharing live content with those 30 people mm. And the guy was like, the guy that he was interviewing or that was interviewing him was like, you know what? When you put it like that, it's like, oh, I'm going to show up for that every yeah. time. Because he was basically talking about being discouraged about numbers and like looking for not like overnight success, but thinking about people that it seems like they came yeah. out and like now they're really popular. But it's like basically it takes time and effort. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, yeah, just a little discouraged. And he talked about like burnout and things like that, which that's stuff, you know, that we'll discuss like the end of the year and taking a break and things yeah. like that. Because he was basically saying they're necessary to, to do. Because even if it's something oh, that yeah. you love, you still need some time for yourself. Yes. Basically. I just thought I'd share that since this is our 30th yeah, because honestly, I was getting discouraged too. But I think about like the feedback that we, the little bit of feedback that we've been getting, it's been pretty good. So yeah, it has been, and it's and it's not besides besides what Boss and Chris, <laughs> <laughs> their feedback was not I was about to say was not not good their feedback was not <laughs> bad their feedback was actually constructive which in turn yeah. will help us grow so yeah thank you because we are trying to work on what they've been telling us so yeah for sure and I one day hope to have whether that's like in my own or 
with you, I one day would like to have a more, because I think that was more so for like conversational podcasting too. So it was like, uh, Mm -hmm. because I also talked about like, think about your listener, like who are you talking to? Like you have to treat it like there's one person in the room. So yeah working up to having like a more conversational format and not like being unapologetically me and not like yeah. thinking too hard, just actually having those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Which I would love to go on that journey with you. I know for you though, sometimes there's stuff, I don't know what all you feel comfortable sharing versus like what you don't. Oh. Like. <laughs> Cause I have an idea I mean, for something. For something for you. No, well, just something that I want to do, whether, whether oh. again, it's like with a co-host or just having like rotating a co-host. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just have to, I need to write it out. I need to write, just write it down and get it out. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to hear it. Oh, yeah. I'm pitching. I'm pitching to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> In today's episode, we discuss the Big Lurch case. Big Lurch is a former rapper convicted of murdering his roommate and eating parts of her body in 2002. I feel like I should have some sort of disclaimer. I feel like if you're here, you have a pretty, like you can stomach certain things anyway, because we're here, we're strange, we talk about stuff like this. Yeah. But I I will say when we get to the actual murder, it's a little graphic. That's my disclaimer. Oh, yeah. Just it is. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Antron Singleton, a.k.a. Big Lurch, is a horrorcore rapper from Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas represent. (laughs) Triple D. (laughs) (laughs) Horrorcore, also known as horror hip hop, horror rap, death hip hop, or death rap, is a subgenre of hip hop music based on horror horror-themed, and often darkly transgressive lyrical content and imagery. So think like Tyler, the Creator, Ghetto Boys, Eminem, and DMX, just to name a few. That's mm-hmm. that style of rap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> I, if I do say so myself. <laughs> it's, an acquired, it's an acquired taste, for sure. Yeah, some of it is extreme so <laughs> i'll stick with my ghetto boys that's about as much as i <laughs> what was that what there was this one song by slim shady marshall mathers uh <laughs> and it was like when he like kills uh or like it's just like really graphic like he talks about Haley's mom which is like his daughter's oh, mom what and he was talks the name about, of that song i don't remember but i was just like whoa this is in this is a lot yeah <laughs> for kids to know word for word because i bet millennial kids know word <laughs> for word. yes antron was born september 15th 1976 and grew up in east dallas east dallas is it's weird because on one side of the street you'll have these huge mansions and then the other side is like the projects Yes, it is really weird. Uh, Washington, D.C. is like that. So like across from the White House, there's like these projects that look like good times. (laughs) For real. No, it is pretty funny. It looks like I said, well, I look like I'm in an episode of good times. (laughs) And what I've noticed is that oftentimes in uh, like well-to-do neighborhoods, you see like these pockets of poverty. Yes. And I'm just like, how, if you paying these property taxes, which I guess maybe there's like semantics and policies, like maybe it doesn't, maybe there's like lines, you know what I mean? So like it cuts off at a certain part. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Still. Do something. (laughs) But that's neither here nor there. (laughs) (laughs) We got on a whole nother subject. (laughs) I mean... (laughs) If you're from here and you've seen East Dallas, it'll be relevant to you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) When he first started out, he performed under the name G Spade, but later changed it to Big Lurch, inspired by the Adams Family. The Adams Family. Great show. Did you hear my snap? Could you hear it? 
Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Big Lurch uh, from the Adams Family. <laughs> That's the uh, really big dude that resembles Frankenstein, right? Yeah. He's like, is he like their butler? Yeah. Or yeah. something like that? Sim- okay. Antron later moved to California to help with his music career. He worked with rappers like Mac Dre. I think I heard of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Looney Colion, RBL Posse, and Mystical. Mystical is horrorcore, right? Technically? I, I think technically he is. Yeah. Well, in so. I, <sighs> It's tough though, because I don't know that all of these, all of these people, especially like the ones that went more mainstream, that all of their music is considered that genre of music. Yeah, but maybe that's like how they started. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. And I rem- I slightly remember the song with Mystical because I, you can find it on YouTube though. Okay, I'm gonna look it up because I don't remember. It's pretty good. It's called How We Coming or something like that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the name of it, yeah. He was in an Oakland-based rap group called Cosmic Slop Shop and had a minor hit with the song Sinful. The group disbanded shortly after. Cosmic Slop Shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a great name. It's an interesting <laughs> name. <laughs> I like it. In 2000, Antron was driving home from his 24th birthday party when a drunk driver crashed into his car, leaving him with a broken neck. While in the hospital, he was heavily medicated for pain. That pain would stay with him, which led him to start using PCP for pain relief. PCP, also known as angel dust, is a hallucinogenic drug. It can also work as a stimulant, anesthetic, or painkiller. It has psychological effects linked to bizarre, violent, or psychotic behavior. And that's, this is going to be a whole another thing, but that's how a lot of people get hooked on drugs because they go, they get in these accidents and they get prescribed these strong painkillers and they get addicted to it. And then when they can't refill their prescription, they go looking for something else. Right. Cause they're already addicted to the drugs that you've given them. You don't have any like yeah. outpatient, you don't put them on any like care or anything to detox or wean them off. And a lot of them are still in pain. So that's funny because I was watching funny, like, aha, like (laughs) ironic. I I don't know. Not funny. Ha ha. I was was watching a documentary on Netflix. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and watch it because I was halfway paying attention to it. But it was, I think it was called The Pharmacy or... It's about a dad that's trying to get justice because his son was addicted to addicted to crack, I believe, and then ends up being murdered or something like that. But he was like a full on drug addict. And it was because he had gotten into an accident and gotten addicted to like opioids or painkillers. And then oh. they just discard. They just discard yeah. him like they do everyone else. <laughs> yep. I'm going to have to watch that. I can, uh, since I mentioned it, I'll put it in the uh, episode details. I just, of course, don't remember the exact name, but it has something to do with pharmacy. So, because I think the dad actually worked as a pharmacy tech or he worked in like a pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. Like as a, yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. On April 19th, 2002, Antron met up with a man named Thomas Moore to smoke PCP. Antron knew him from the music industry, and they would eventually become roommates. Thomas's 21-year-old girlfriend, Tynesha Isius, also lived with them. Uh, I know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so I apologize. And if it's right, let us know. Shout us out. We deserve, if, if she's <laughs> right, we, get a, we deserve a pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Antron claimed that Thomas kept giving him PCP all day. The next day, Antron was experiencing overwhelming pain and realized that he was out of PCP. He went home to get more drugs from Thomas, but he wasn't there. Tanisha was home and he pushed past her and forced his way in. 
When she started to scream, Antron beat her until she was quiet. So as all of this is happening, he's still high from the day before. Right. But he's still in pain. Yeah. So I don't... Drugs are confusing. (laughs) Drugs are confusing. Because he was... (laughs) Because he was... uh, Initially, he was using it for pain. Right. But maybe he was immune to it or something. I was going to say maybe by this point, and especially you're yeah. talking about uh, he was giving him PCP all day. Maybe all he had day. built up uh, like some sort of tolerance to it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Antron continued to look for drugs, but couldn't find any. So, yeah, he was pretty desperate at this point. Yeah. He then went to the kitchen and grabbed a large knife and began to stab Tynesha repeatedly. He sliced open her chest and pulled out her right lung and began to eat a piece of it. When he was done, he took off his clothes and ran out of the house. Tynesha's friends saw him running down the street naked and covered in blood and called the police. That... That's crazy. Yeah. You remember... I was just about to say that. Go ahead. Where... But this was in Cherokee, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were just sitting there. Like, I think we were just sitting on the porch, chilling, and all of a sudden, we look up, and there's this naked man running, just out running around. Yeah. So, I think that's what he was on, too. I think so, too. Just for context, we were kids. Yeah, we were... (laughs) I like kid kids like yeah not like young young kids but you know the, you see a naked man and you're just like whoa what is happening I, I couldn't remember like the exact year but when I heard this story I was like where did they live because it had to be around like early 2000s mid to early 2000s oh, when yeah. that happened to us yeah yeah but yeah that was the day I was like oh no ma'am I, <laughs> I I didn't know, you know, of anything that would ever make you do that or feel yeah. like that or that's scary. That is. When the coroner examined Tynesha's body, she had multiple stab wounds. Her jaw and neck were broken and she had fractured an eye socket. She was also missing her right lung and the knife blade had been broken off and lodged in her left shoulder. When Antron was examined, pieces of human flesh were found in his stomach. The flesh was a match for Tynesha. Antron was arraigned on June 13th, and it was ruled that he was sane at the time of the murder and would stand trial. I don't know how true this is, but I watched a YouTube video about this case. That's what I was saying earlier. Technically, it's a documentary. And they were saying that he was high the whole time and he didn't even remember being arraigned. Yeah, I I can imagine. But that was like a week. It was like in a week's time. So he was high that whole week. Like from... From because they arrested him, right? So mm-hmm. it had to be from the time from the day that he was smoking PCP yeah. all day. You smoke PCP, correct? Yeah. You can yeah, you can smoke it. Oh. Yeah. It's different ways. Okay. The owner of Antron's record label, Milton Grimes, was his defense attorney. I don't like that name. It just sounds shady. Grimy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Shady McGee. <laughs> Milton Grimes argued that Antron was in a psychotic state due to his use of PCP the night before the murder. The court ruled that his claim of insanity was not a satisfactory reason for committing a crime. The DA argued that voluntary drug use cannot be used as grounds for an insanity plea in California, and the judge agreed. How do you feel about it? It kind of makes sense. So I don't, yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, that's why That's why I was saying it sucks. It honestly sucks. Like this yeah. whole timeline of being in an accident that you didn't cause, 
having yep. to take these painkillers, becoming addicted, not getting help from the healthcare system or not getting help from the hospital and then getting addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. And then this, this, this happens. happens. Yeah. And I'm sorry. It is, it is honestly insanity. It is a temporary moment of insanity. Like if, especially if it's a, it is like a psychedelic drug or he was hallucinating. He, yeah. he was not in his right state of mind, but unfortunately you voluntarily took those yeah. drugs. It's, this whole thing is just sad. It is pretty sad. It took the jury less than an hour to find Antron Singleton guilty of the murder of Tynesha Isius. On November 7, 2003, Antron was convicted of first-degree murder, torture, and aggravated mayhem. Tynesha's mother filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Antron, his bodyguard, stress-free records, death row records, and Tynesha's boyfriend. So, apparently she just threw death row records in there just because... Mm-hmm. Because Suge Knight was like, I don't even know these people. Oh, really? Yeah, she just threw them in there. But I don't know. Because it was rumored that he may have worked with them, but I don't think that he really did. That's weird. Yeah, I was thinking maybe he did work with someone on the label, and that's why. Maybe like a collab or something, but I don't think he was ever signed to them or anything. Everything else, I was like, oh, okay. But then Death Row Records, I was like, yeah. I just thought that that was odd that you have stress-free record, records, exactly. but then you have a horror core yes. uh, rapper. Yes, the irony. Yeah. <laughs> she claims that the labels provided Antron with drugs to encourage him to act out so that it would make him more marketable as a gangsta rapper in air quotes, <laughs> she believed that they basically wanted him to live the life that he rapped about. I believe it. Yeah. It's stupid, but. Yeah. Because I'll be thinking about like some beefs, like not beefs that's like somebody, like maybe they grew up in the same hood or something like that. So they actually know each other, but like beefs where it's like, you ain't never met this man. (laughs) How are y'all beefing to the point to where now somebody ended up dead? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What? Yep. I believe it. There is a theory that Antron was set up by his lawyer, Milton Grimes and Tanisha's boyfriend, Thomas Moore. So it was rumored that Thomas was abusive and she was about to leave him. And He set the whole thing up. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That could explain why he drugged him all day the day before. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. That's just now. (laughs) Lord. I just now got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Huh. Now I'm like, yeah, okay. He did it. (laughs) Tanisha's mother supports this theory. According to her, Tanisha had been hit in the back of her neck with a scooter. She claims there was a bloody handprint on the scooter that didn't belong to Antron. His prints weren't even on the knife that was lodged in her shoulder. How? That I got from the YouTube video. Oh, The interview with her. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, a scooter like as in like a like a regular scooter, like a push with your yeah, okay. them hard scooters that them kids used yeah. to ride that broke your ankles. Yeah. <laughs> she said it was one of those. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. There, this is questionable. All of that is questionable because it's like, huh? Yep. Wherever his prints, and if you're not in your right mind, you definitely don't have time to wipe prints or put on exactly. gloves. You wouldn't have been thinking about that at all. Exactly. Another thing that was brought to her attention was that they were basically living in a trap house, but there were no drugs or weapons found inside the home. Tynesha had a PCP in her system, even though she didn't do drugs. There was enough PCP in her system to kill her. I find this very suspicious because 
if someone is not using drugs or let's say they're not like a like a habitual user of drugs and they do Mm -hmm. decide to try a drug or do drugs i don't know that their first choice would be pcp that's a drug that's a drug (laughs) yeah i mean i would think they would start with like weed or something start with weed and it's not even been proven that for regular people so maybe if you have like an addictive personality or something like that weed can be like a gateway drug yeah but for normal people that's not even something that people are like oh i smoked weed last year now i'm on crack like that's not a thing (laughs) (laughs) so it's not so this is making me think what if her boyfriend forced her to take the pcp and she overdosed and then he well no because then she let him in Oh, yeah. So then they probably would have had to done it after the whole thing happened. That's possible. Because they're saying, yeah, because I know that I have to watch it again, but there were dogs in the house. So they were saying a lot of that damage, like, could have been done by the dogs Mm -hmm. because her chest was, like, ripped open. I saw the pictures. And another thing, where are all the drugs and weapons? Yeah. They had to have known the police were going to be there for something. This That makes me think they set it up. Oh, so you're saying, okay. So you're saying, they took, yeah. yeah, they removed, so they were living in a trap house. And then they mm-hmm. took all of like the drugs and weapons out before it happened because yeah. they knew, I got what you're, okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. It's a possibility. There were bloody fingerprints footprints and other dna found at the scene but all of it mysteriously disappeared Mm. how Mm. i don't know when antron was arrested it was said that he was covered in blood but in the photos there was only blood around his mouth and a few drops on his chest that's true because i saw those pictures because they took pictures of him while he was still naked and all that there was no blood huh and it was just like huh no go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say it was just like they said just a couple drops that's it that doesn't make any sense especially if you supposedly uh tore into this woman's chest and then ate a piece like ate a piece of her yes yeah that's weird because of all of this, Tanisha's mother doesn't believe that Antron murdered her daughter and thinks he deserves a new trial. And this, this is coming from her. <laughs> that's what I, yeah, that's okay. This is oh. coming from her. No, I was just about to say that. That's why, because I'm like, and this oh. is coming from <laughs> her mother. Like, if her mom is saying that she doesn't feel like Antron is guilty, you would think that that someone like a family could be so desperate or so emotional that they would just want to have anyone locked up. Cause he seems like the obvious, you know, yeah. for something this heinous for real. Cause it's, it's a pretty gruesome crime, but it is even she is saying, Hey, this doesn't add up. Like two plus two is not equaling four. So I have questions. <laughs> and it's so many questions. Like, so the documentary I cannot remember the name of it. I think it may be called Rhyme and Punishment or something like that, but it's on YouTube. Okay. So the whole documentary I can't find because they're talking about maybe three different cases, but they show the full segment from his case, the interview with her mom and everything, the interview with him from prison. Only thing, they do show her body. That's how I saw her body. Oh, so if you're if you can't take stuff like that, because almost it's it was bad. They don't blur it out. No. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But if you want to know more about it, that's the only thing I found as far as like a documentary. There are interviews, other interviews with him from prison mm-hmm. on YouTube. So all you have to do is put his name, and they'll come up. Okay, I'm gonna look into it because I saw it. I just didn't get a chance to like sit down and watch it. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Sit down and watch it. Antron is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like as far as like 
any theories or final thoughts or anything i honestly especially if this is true if all of this like evidence that she's saying that doesn't exist or like that's inconsistent that uh, tanisha's mom Mm -hmm. is saying i'm thinking that it is possible that her boyfriend is responsible and just set antron up because he's an easy he was an easy target yeah and not only that he was i believe yeah he was part of the record label too so he knew the thing is they think that him and the defense attorney did it that they were in cahoots yeah yeah and any other time i would be like okay lock him up but if her mom is trying to get him out something's not right yeah because she don't owe him anything she owes him nothing no it's just all around sad it is sad and this is one of those cases that i hope something else comes out or maybe like that they reopen it because yeah yeah i'd be interested to see how that plays out and this just shows that we need a better health care system baby <laughs> Yes, we do. Because y'all are getting, they getting all these people hooked. Yeah. And because there was another case I cannot, because I watch, sometimes all of them run together because I watch so much documentaries and shows about true crime. But there was a case, exact same thing. A guy got in an accident, got hooked on painkillers and he started taking, I believe, heroin. Yeah. And he killed his roommate. Basically, pretty much the this. same. Yeah, it is sad, and I hate, <laughs> I hate when something's like sad like this, and then I'm just like, that's all, that's all, folks. But that know. really is, <laughs> that's all we have. Yeah, we. I mean, I'll keep looking yeah. and see if there are updates, but so far, he's still. There's no. No advances right. or anything. They felt like it was open and so. shit. They debated for hours. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast and Twitter at Pod Strange World. Also on Facebook at It's a Strange World After All. And even though it's currently under construction, go ahead and follow our new TikTok page. It's a strange world after all. Be sure to keep up with us on Instagram for those hashtag Myth Mondays and hashtag Strange Saturdays posts. Yes, we would love to hear from you. Yes, you in your home, in your car, at your job, wherever you are listening. We would love to hear from you. Tell us what you <laughs> tell us what you think <laughs> about this case or any of the cases we've done so far. And with regard to this case, uh, if you know some more or have some more information on it, definitely reach out uh, to us because yeah, we're curious to know. Um, also, if there is anything at all in the world of strange that you would like for us to cover, let us know. Even if you just want to say hey there. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of It's It's a Strange Strange World World After After All. All. And thank you so much for keeping it strange. (laughs) (laughs) For keeping it strange with us. Tide and all. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I think we did good though. Yeah, I will say like, like your co-worker said and like you've said sometimes at the start of doing the show I'll be like yeah I don't think I'm gonna yes. make it but then once we get into yeah. it I'm just like okay this yeah. is <laughs> we good now because <laughs> I was glad when you texted because I was still sitting up here mad about my job oh <laughs> oh thank god it'll take my mind off of it <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah. oh well, thanks oh oh is this ha- it? yeah that's it Oh, I can stop it. Okay. Bye. Bye.